Hi friends, Quill here and welcome back to the channel and somewhat of a more serious video. We are going to be discussing Pokemon Sword and Shield today. Today is Wednesday, November the 13th, which means the games come out in just two days. And while a lot of people like me are very excited about it, there are people who have a lot of concerns. And those are the sorts of things that we're going to be talking about today. Overall, what I think you should get out of this video is if you are finding yourself asking, should I buy this game? I would like to help you answer that question or at least help you get closer to understanding whether or not this game is going to be interesting to you and whether you should spend the money on it. It is 60 US dollars, which is kind of expensive, but at the end of the day, if you've got the money and you're going to enjoy the game, then in my mind, it's worth it. On the other hand, there are a lot of things left out in Pokemon Sword and Shield, and if those things matter to you enough, I don't think that this game is right for you. As with any franchise, whether it be video games or movies or books or anything, every entry is not going to be right for every person, and I'm not going to sit here and say, yes, you should absolutely buy the game, or no, you should absolutely not, because I think the answer is going to be depend on what you value in a game and the things that you deem necessary for making a game worth it. That said, these are my final thoughts before Pokemon Sword and Shield are released, including my suggestions for who should and shouldn't buy this game and a discussion of the controversy surrounding these games as a whole. Let's go ahead and get into it. So Pokemon Sword and Shield were announced in February, just over eight months ago, after yet another controversial game with Pokemon Let's Go, Pikachu, and Eevee. A lot of fans were very upset that the first Pokemon game on the new console would not be a main series game, but instead a, a sort of spin-off that was not really a spin-off. Let's Go was really weird. This announcement left the fan base energized and excited for the new games that were to come. Shortly thereafter, however, Pokemon did release the information that not every Pokemon would be included in the games from past generations, which left a lot of fans, including myself, a little bit upset about the games and unsure whether or not they were going to be worth it. Particularly angry fans took to Twitter screaming, bring back the national decks and causing a lot of uproar within the community. It was then recently leaked that only 400 Pokemon appeared in the Galar Pokedex. Included in the cut Pokemon were fan favorites, such as a bunch of the pseudo legendaries, almost all of the starters, and legendary mythical Pokemon. This phenomenon known as Dexit was justified by the Pokemon company by saying that the number of Pokemon was reduced so that the graphics in Pokemon Sword and Shield would be better. In recent days, many people have been very upset as the games have been leaked, including screenshots and clips from the game showing that the graphics aren't necessarily the greatest thing to hit the Switch. In fact, some fans are saying that these graphics are steps back from the 3DS games. This led to many people swearing that they would never buy these games and would instead ridicule people for buying them and and sort of shilling for Game Freak. On Twitter, these people have started the hashtag Game Freak Lied in reference to their promise for better graphics for the exchange in a larger Pokedex. The hope of many of them is that their message will get across to Game Freak and that the next Pokemon games will be better. In fact, I think even people on the pro Game Freak side are hoping for better games the next time around. I know that I am at least. But then with today came an influx of positive reviews for the game. I have a few of these reviews written on this card. I'm gonna read right now some quotes from them. A reviewer from Nintendo Life said that he was filled with a sense of joy and wonder that he's not felt in a Pokemon game for a very, very long time. He rated Pokemon Sword and Shield eight out of 10. From GameSpot, a reviewer said that this was the best new generation of Pokemon in years, nine out of 10. And the possibly most hotly debated review was from IGN. This is a quote from Casey of IGN. She says that this is the best Pokemon game I have ever played and I've played all of them. I've watched a lot of reviews of these games. I've listened to a lot of people on Reddit. I've thought about it a lot myself, and I'm not gonna lie with you guys. In the past 24 hours, I have even considered canceling my pre-order. Don't worry though, I am still going to play it. We are still going to have our playthrough. It should start on Friday, but that's besides the point. I guess what I'm saying is, from the standpoint of someone who's not played the game yet, at the end of the day, there are so many differing opinions from people who have played the game and from people who haven't. And now to the answer of the question of this video, should you buy Pokemon Sword and Shield? And I don't think that there is a set in stone answer for everybody. At the end of the day, these reviews, those Reddit posts, they mean nothing. At the end of the day, what matters is how much you enjoy the game. And I think that comes down to what you value in a game. If you're one of the people who has sworn against buying the game anyway, obviously don't buy the game, but I urge you to contact Game Freak, whether it is via mail or email or even Twitter. Voice your concerns in a respectful, non 
threatening way so that maybe Game Freak will hear those, those critiques and improve games coming forward. If you're like me and already committed to buying the games, I would go ahead and do it. We both know that if you fall in that category, you're going to get the games. Nothing that I can say, nothing that Reddit can say can change that, and that's okay. If you enjoy the games, you enjoy the games, that's great. Now, talking to the people in the middle, people who are unsure whether or not they should buy the games and people who are probably going to watch this video more than others. From what I've read and watched based on a number of reviews of these games and accounts of people who have played them, if you are obsessed with the visuals of a game and the graphics of a game can make or break it for you, do not play the games. Do not buy them, do not waste your money, you will be disappointed. Especially compared to other Switch games, it has been very clear that these games leave a lot to be desired. If you play Pokemon for a deep and compelling story, first of all, you're playing the wrong franchise, but that's for another video. But if you are looking for a deep story, again, I would advise you against purchasing these games, at least at first. It sounds like their story is not particularly deep, the game is not very extended, and there is a lot of focus on competitive battle. That said, if you are invested in the competitive community and enjoy most the competitive scene and competitive battling and trading and competing against your friends, absolutely get Pokemon Sword and Shield. From what I've read, the story is streamlined and there have been a lot of improvements made to the competitive scene. Game Freak has made it very clear both in their interviews and in the leaks that we've seen come out since that these games are going to be very competitive focused. I have looked at the leaks in depth and can tell you that there is a lot of nuance in the new Pokemon introduced to the region, the new moves introduced to the region, the changes to older Pokemon in the new region. It's a very, very exciting time to be a competitive battler in the Pokemon world. I also say absolutely buy the games if you're looking for an exciting experience. One of the things that all of the reviews focused on was how good the music was, how good the gym battles were, how intense everything felt. All of them basically said that the game are not very good on the story aspect of things but in terms of the intensity of the game it feels really great. The wild area is apparently very freeing and there's a lot you can do in these games that you couldn't in past entries. If you f still find yourself questioning whether you should buy these games and none of these categories really fit you then I urge you to wait for a second. The holiday season is coming up there's no reason to rush into buying these games. A lot of people are going to be playing them on YouTube. I'm going to be playing it on YouTube. If you don't want to watch my series, that's fine. But if you do, I suggest you subscribe so you don't miss that. By the way, as a side note, I do need some more help deciding which game to play and which starter to pick. So I'll link the, the last video where you can go vote on both of those for the playthrough I'm going to be doing on this channel. But like I said, if you're questioning whether or not you should get these games even after the advice that I've given you, I suggest holding off for now, watching some people play through the game, whether that's me, whether that's other people. I know that Patters is doing a playthrough. I know that A Drive is planning on doing something. There are plenty of people who are going to be playing through this game so you can watch it before you buy it. This is going to be a very divisive title. People are either going to love this game or they're going to hate it. And in a lot of ways, there's no way to tell which you're going to be until you've played the game yourself or at least watch someone play it. And so I think that's the best thing for you to do right now if you're still up in the air. In short, I'm going to be getting the game. I'm very excited about it. I'm excited about the competitive implications for the game. And my final thoughts are, no, the game is not perfect. It's far from it, but it's a Pokemon game. I love Pokemon games and I'm going to play it. I'm going to enjoy it. However, I understand people who don't think that's the case for them. And I strongly suggest that if anyone has any problems with the game, that they contact Game Freak, they contact Nintendo in some way, they have to listen to their fan base or they will die as a company. They know that. So like I said, regardless of how you feel, I suggest speaking up, play the games if you want to, don't play the games if you don't, but respect people who disagree with you and respect the creators of the Pokemon games. Even if you hate the games, the people who created them are still people and deserve to be respected as people at least. But that will do it for today, my friends. Let me know down in the comments, do you plan on getting Pokemon Sword and Shield? Did my point of view and my advice help you make that decision at all? And if you are buying the games, what's the thing you're most looking forward to? For me, it's gotta be the competitive scene. I fall under that umbrella of, I love the competitive scene, so I'm going to be getting the games regardless. But like I said, there was a little bit of uncertainty there. But that will do it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to catch that Nuzlocke I talked about earlier. And above all else, respect yourself, respect others, and just have fun with these games if you choose to buy them. But that'll do it for this video, my friends. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, see you next time.